right, in today's video, we're going to be looking at subtracting rational expressions with unlike denominators. So really what's changing here is this minus sign right here in the middle of each of these questions. So we just have to be really aware that we're distributing a negative across the back side once we find our common denominator. So let's think through this for a moment. Let's look at number one. All right, same instructions we've done before. Simplify each expression and state any restrictions on the variables. All right, so remember we always want to start by factoring completely everything we can. Well, the top doesn't factor on number one, but the bottom, there is a GCF of x, so it'll be x plus five. And then look at this one, it's x plus five over here. So my common denominator that I'm shooting for is x times x plus five. And then I need to go back and figure out what do I need to multiply this first one by to get that denominator? Well, I already have it, so it's just really a one. But what about the second one? I just have x plus five, so I need to multiply through by an x. So on the first one, the first expression, I'm just distributing a once, so it doesn't really change, so 4x plus 15. Now on the back one, I'm distributing a negative and an x, so it really just becomes negative x, right? Now we just combine like terms. 4x minus x is 3x plus 15 over x times x plus 5. Now we want to look and see, can we reduce it all? Well, the top, there is a GCF, hopefully you see it, of 3. That gives me x plus 5. Now I look at this, and I have an x plus 5. And look at that. These will cancel out. So my most simplified version is going to be 3 over x. But I also need to consider the restrictions. Where can x not be? Well, look at this. x cannot be a 0. And if I jump this over the equal sign in my mind, that means x cannot be a negative 5. So there's two restrictions, a 0 and a negative 5. So as you can see, our answers are similar to where we've been before. Let's try another one. Number 2, 4 over x plus 3 minus x minus 3 over x squared minus 3x minus 18. So let's do some factoring. Let's rewrite this guy. So two numbers that multiply to negative 18 but add to a negative 3. Um, a 3 and a 6 would work, so it needs to be a negative 6 and a positive 3. So now I consider, what is my common denominator going to be? Well, I have the x plus 3 over here, so I just need the x minus 6 times x plus 3. Now let's see, what do I need to multiply this guy by to get this denominator? Well, it needs the x minus 6 part. All right, now, <clears throat> the back one, the back expression is good to go. It has the right denominator already, so we're good. So first of all, I'm going to distribute that 4. So I'm going to have 4x minus 24. Now remember, there's a minus 1 right here. I need to distribute that negative, so it would be minus x plus 33. Now let's clean that up. 4x minus x is 3x. Negative 24 plus 33 is going to be plus 9. On the bottom, I have x minus 6 times x plus 3. Hopefully you recognize there's a GCF in the numerator. That'll give me, if I take a 3 out, I'll have x plus 3. Then I can start reducing because I have an x plus 3 factor in my den denominator. So then my simplified expression would be 3 over x minus 6, but then look at your restrictions. <laughs> x cannot be, that would be a 6, and this would be a negative 3, right? Those are my restrictions on this guy. Let's try one more example. All right, the first one on this looks like it needs to be factored out pretty good. Now, x squared minus 11 kind of looks like a difference of squares, but 11 is not a perfect square, so there's nothing I could do with that. But the denominator definitely can be factored. So two numbers that multiply to 12 but add to a negative 7. So that would be a 3 and a 4, both being negative. So x minus 3, x minus 4. So when I consider my common denominator, I've got to have those, x minus 3, x minus 4. So so this guy's good to go. But the second expression, I need the x minus 3. So what I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. Remember, this is just a 1. This one, I'm really not multiplying it by anything but a 1 to get that common denominator. So, okay, so I'll have x squared minus 11. Now, remember, I have a negative here as well. 
So let's take our time to do this first. So let's FOIL this first, okay? Notice you're going to have to FOIL, so we'll have x squared <clears throat> minus 3x plus x would be minus 2x minus 3 when I FOIL it. Now I need to distribute through that negative 1, so it would be minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. All right, so there's a lot to be careful of on that, all right? So be careful. Um, <clears throat> let's combine like terms. x squared minus x squared. That will leave me with a 2x. Negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. And then I'll have x minus 3, x minus 4 on the bottom. Again, do you see the GCF that needs to come out on the top? Hopefully you do. If we take out a 2, we'll have x minus 4. And then there's more reducing that we can do. All right, good deal. So that leaves me with 2 over x minus 3. Now, where are my restrictions? <laughs> Keep putting x bar, sorry. Where are my restrictions? Well, x cannot equal, put that equal to 0, jump it over in your mind. It can't be a positive 3, and this one cannot be a positive 4. So that's what we're doing today. The biggest difference is the minus in the middle. You have to be careful about distributing, okay? So let me know what questions you have when you get to class, and good luck.